Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Just super quickly before we get into it, some people watching this probably know I've already previously done a Rhiney questline guide. However, at the time, I thought it would be better to keep it as quick and concise as possible, and therefore I left out some of the detail, as I'd already covered this in previous videos, so I didn't want people to think I was farming views by duplicating all the information. And this unforeseeably led people to think I was farming views by directing them to other sources to keep this video short and to the point. Therefore, I have revamped the guide from the ground up and contains absolutely every morsel of information that you'll need to complete Rani's questline. So let's get into it. These first couple of steps are probably just for the absolute beginners among us, but all the chapters are timestamped in case you already know what you're doing up to a certain point. So firstly, as soon as you have acquired Torrent, you can teleport yourself back to the Church of Ely and you'll meet Rani for the first time. When she asks you a question, tell her, yes, I can summon Torrent, and she will give you the Spirit Calling Bell and the Lone Wolf Ashes. A quick side note, don't worry if you miss this encounter, it won't lock you out of anything in her quest, and it won't even lock you out of the items that she gives you. You can still go to the Roundtable Hold later on when you do have access to it, and purchase the aforementioned items from the Twin Maiden Husks. The next time you'll see Rani is much further along in your playthrough, right over the other side of Liernia. Before you can get to her, you need to progress through Caria Manor and defeat Royal Knight Loretta. Once you've done this, you can head out the back of Caria Manor into the Three Sisters area of the game and go and speak with Rani at her tower. Please note, and this is very important, Rani will not appear at her rise for the next stage of her questline if the Radan Festival has already become active. You can find her before the festival, otherwise you will need to defeat Star Scourge Radan first, then come back and complete the previous step that I just mentioned. This is because Blythe is required to continue her questline and he will not leave the Radan Festival until Radan has been defeated. And to give you some more information around this, aside from the obvious of doing Rani's questline, the other two things you may have done in your game that will cause the festival to become active are activating the Grand Lift of Dectus or activating any of the Sites of Grace within the Altus Plateau. So if you've done either of these two things, eat Radan first, then go back to Rani and you'll be able to progress her quest. However, don't worry either way if you meet her before or after Radan, because you need to defeat him at some point, and the order in which you do this will not affect her questline. Once you have spoken to Rani at her rise, you now need to introduce yourself to the three people in her service. A fog wall will appear and stop you from leaving until you have done so. Once you've spoken to them all, head back to Rani and finish up her dialogue, and you can now leave and fast travel again as normal. If when you speak to her, she tells you to sod off and she won't speak to you, this just means you need to return to Roundtable Hold and speak to Roger first. He will suggest that you enter her service and you can then complete the previous step. Next up, we're going to head to Shifra River, which you can find here in Eastern Limgrave, just near the Mistwoods, at the bottom of this well. Once here, you need to progress through the entirety of the first zone, head up the lift, and head all the way along the second zone as well. Once you reach the next site of Grace, you can find and speak to Blythe. However, do make sure that you defeat any enemies in the area before you go and speak to him, because they can and will interrupt your conversation, and it can end very, very poorly. So defeat the ancestors before you then go and have a chat with him. Lithe will now advise you that he has no idea what's going on and needs Celevis's help. So let's go and meet Celevis at his rise, which is just south of Rani's rise, and see what he has to say. Head to the Rise of Celevis, which, as I say, is just south of Rani's. And once here, after giving you a few more snarky comments, he will tell you to go and speak to Selen. Sorceress Selen is back in Limgrave, specifically here in the Waypoint Ruins. So you'll need to head back and defeat the Mad Pumpkin Head boss, which is blocking the entrance to her room. Once he's defeated, go and have a chat with her. You will need to respond in the affirmative that you would like to enter into her service and learn sorceries, despite her somewhat unsavoury methods. Once you've done this, you can now present her with the invitation that Celevis gave you, and she will advise you that Radan has used his power to stop the movement of the stars. At this point, you must now go and kill Radan if you haven't done so already to restore the movement of the stars. And once Radan has been slain, you can now access Nokron just here via the giant meteor that hit the ground in Limgrave. 
Please note that before you head into the crater and do the next part of the quest, which involves acquiring the Finger Slayer Blade, if you are planning on doing Celevis' questline as well, you want to do that now because he will become a lifeless puppet after you acquire the blade and you will be locked out of certain spirit ashes and the magic scorpion charm. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to skip that, but if you do care, I can cover his questline separately in full in another video. As I say, all you'll really miss out on is the magic scorpion charm and a select handful of minor spirit ashes, including one very powerful one. To be fair, the dung eater spirit ash is absolutely amazing, but that's not the purpose of this video. I'll leave that there and we can revisit in another one if you want to. Now that you've finished with Celevis, head into the crater and progress through Nokron until we reach the treasure chest containing the finger slayer blade, which is right at the end of the knight's sacred ground. Once you've grabbed the Finger Slayer Blade, you can now return to Rani and give it to her. She will reward you with the Karian Inverted Statue, which you can now use to turn the Karian Study Hall here in Lyurnia upside down to reach the top of the Divine Tower of Lyurnia. I will just run through this hall, but take your time progressing through here because there are some really cool items to loot along with this NPC invader that keeps spamming Loretta's great bow at you, that I feel like you just have to kill out of principle because they're so annoying. Once you've had your fun inside the inverted tower, make your way out and along to the giant divine tower in the distance. Once you go up the massive lift and get to the top, you can acquire the curse mark of death. At this point, before we go any further, what you can do is teleport back and speak to EG, who now has an amazing talisman, the Karian Filigreed Crest, which has been added to his stock at this part of the quest chain. This is great because it reduces the FP consumed when using skills, and some skills in this game are just so damn good. Now that you've done that, you can access the third and final rise, Renna's Rise. This is to the northeast of Rani's Rise, and as you'll see when you head to the door, the seal has now vanished and we can enter. Head in, climb up the ladder, and just behind you when you get to the top of the ladder, you can open a chest containing the Snow Witch set, which is the same set that Rani wears. Now make your way to the top, and you can use the Waygate to be transported to Ainsel River Main. Look for the loot nearby once you're transported to this area, and you'll see that you can grab the miniature Rani doll. Now, rest at a sight of Grace and keep trying to talk to it until she finally responds. Exhaust her dialogue and you are now tasked with defeating the Baleful Shadow. We will now start our journey through Noxtella as it's a bit of a trek until we get to the Baleful Shadow. As you're on the way, there are a few sights of Grace you'll come to and each one unveils more and more interesting facts as you speak to the Rani doll. So on your way there, make sure you rest at the sites of Grace and converse with her as you wish to reveal some incredibly awesome lore about the world and Rani herself. Once you're done, you will meet me here just as we're about to go into combat with the Baleful Shadow. Depending on your build, he can be a very tough enemy and you cannot summon Spirit Ashes here. So be very careful with this fight. Do not let how easily my character has just destroyed him fool you. And no, that's not me being really big headed and saying I'm really good at the game. I am playing on New Game Plus, so in theory, all the enemies are much harder. However, this character in particular that a lot of my Twitch viewers will know as Mrs. Binky Bonk uses an absolute god tier build that can just melt every single enemy in seconds, which is why he crumbled to dust with no issues at all. Upon defeating him, Rani will thank you and reward you with the discarded palace key. However, before you leave, progress a bit further and down this lift and make sure you activate this Lake of Rot Site of Grace. You can now use this key to open the locked chest in Renala's room once you have defeated Renala, obviously, and this will grant you the Dark Moon Ring. Now head back to the Lake of Rot Site of Grace that we just activated and we're going to progress through the Lake of Rot into the Grand Cloister. Be very careful because rot can be absolutely deadly, so make sure you have got lots of high rot resist gear. The stat you're looking for is immunity. And ideally, you want to come equipped with a lot of boluses like I've done, or some other way of removing the rot. 
An amazing spell for doing this is the Flame Cleanse Me spell, which can be grabbed off of a corpse very easily just here in Liurnia. Of course, it's going to require a seal to actually be able to use it, but it's a fantastic tool to make getting through the Lake of Rot an absolute doddle. As you see, I have been doing, be very careful and conservative as you're progressing from platform to platform and make sure you're activating all of the triggers to raise all the platforms as you go. Eventually, you'll get to the other side and you can head down these stairs and light the Sight of Grace at the Grand Cloister. Progress through the Grand Cloister, either ignoring or dealing with all of the Kindreds of Rot as you go. There's also an optional boss here and some really cool loot, as there was in the Lake of Rot. So when you're brave enough and you've got time, make sure you come back and explore it fully. Once you get to the other side, you can interact with this coffin and you'll be teleported to outside of Astel's boss arena. Enter in and let's tackle Astel, natural born of the void. Astel is one of my favorite bosses in the game. I love the arena, the music, the boss. I think this is an absolutely stunning boss fight. Soak in the atmosphere and have your fun when Astel isn't absolutely obliterating your shit in. Once Astel has been defeated, firstly, congratulations, you legend. Light the Sight of Grace, and we are very nearly at the end of Rani's questline. Now you can head out of the other exit to Astel's room and go up the lift. Without the Dark Moon Ring, there would be a magic seal here preventing you and blocking your way. Once you get to the top, you will be in the Moonlight Altar. Be careful as you progress through this area because the giant glintstone dragon Adula will spawn and you want to head on through into the Church of Manus Celeste and grab the Sight of Grace. And as I'm making my way there, I should let you know that for areas like the Moonlight Altar and the Lake of Rot and all others, I have full guides on my channel that tell you where every single possible missable thing are. So make sure you go and check out the Things You Miss series if you want to come back once you've completed Rani's quest and fully comb through these areas. For now though, once you've rested up, head down here into the depths below. Be careful as you're dropping down the platforms. And before long, you will get to this doll of Rani's body. Interact with it and place the Dark Moon Ring on her finger. Once you finish speaking to her, you'll be rewarded with one of the most incredibly cool weapons in the game. A recurring weapon and a nod to all of FromSoft's other Souls games, the Dark Moon Greatsword. You have now done everything, obviously other than beating the game, that you need to do in order to access Rani's Age of the Stars ending, which in my opinion is the best and coolest ending in the game. There is just one more thing I'd like to show you that we can do now we've completed Rani's questline. Teleport back to Rani's Rise and outside, you unfortunately will have to defeat the best boy in the world, Blythe. But when you do, you will be rewarded with almost his entire armor set and also his sword. The only piece we're missing is the helm because obviously he's a half wolf. He doesn't wear a helm. That's just his actual face. <laughs> but if you head to the rise of Celebus and climb up the wall here, you can also loot a headpiece representative of Blythe and you can now cosplay as the best boy in the game. And as we wield Blythe's sword in one hand and the Dark Moon Greatsword in the other, all that is left for me to say, my friends, is thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.